Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to compare Nina Classic Crest with Express It Blending Card by request from a few people that have asked over the last couple months. And I'm going to use some Lawn Fawn stamps, the little Roar set using this Thanks from one Lawn Fawn set and a Tree from another Lawn Fawn set, combining them all to make one little, little card. Now this is Express It Blending Card. And I've used Nina all the time, but the Express It Blending card I have not used here on YouTube, so there we go. The, the heaviness of the paper is definitely different. The Express It Blending card is much lighter, and it also has a cooler tone to it. But just know that it only looks cooler in comparison to the bright white next to it. If you're using the Blending card, you're not going to notice the difference if it's on a card with other colors on it, etc. And the, the weight of the paper is much lighter, so if you're going to pop it up on a layer or something, then you're going to want to layer it on another piece of cardstock because it'll collapse on itself or something, I think, because it's not very heavy. But it is a nice paper. It's a little slicker, and that's the first thing you'll notice when you start coloring with it. And what I'm trying to do is color the image left to right um, in sort of a nice progression so that we can see apples to apples how one looks versus how the other looks. But of course, when you're coloring by hand, you can't use exactly the same number of strokes or anything. So it's it's as good as I can do for now. So I've added my dark shadow color and I'm gonna use a YG17 to blend the two of them together and see how that works. And I use techniques that I've developed using Nina. So I wanna see if my techniques work on the Express It blending card. And I'm finding it's not as, well, I shouldn't say it's not as blendy, but it just blends differently. It looks a little different than it does on my Nina. I'm going over the whole thing again with my YG03, my first color that I put down. And when I do that same thing here, it doesn't work quite as well. If I were to try to make it look like the one on the left with darker, richer colors, I would put more layers of color in it. But I'm going to try to leave it because I'm trying to do apples to apples. And there you go. So I'm doing, I moved up to do the top of the tree. I'm going to do that in darker colors. So I'm using a, a much darker green for the center. And I'm using the same green that I used for the dark in the dinosaur to use for my mid-tone up here. And then I'll use my mid-tone from the dinosaur to reflect up here in the trees at their tips. And I'm definitely seeing some difference in color. The, the Nina is definitely richer in color right away. And again, I could probably go back and add more layers of color on the blending card in order to make it as intense. And that possibly is one of those things that would be an adjustment if I were to switch to blending card, is that I just have to work with it and develop techniques that are going to make me happy with that paper. So whatever paper you are using, and if you're somewhere else in the world where you don't have access to Nina, then you'll need to develop techniques that are gonna work with whatever paper that you have in your country. Because I know I get people from all over the world and I want you to feel free to experiment. So for some papers, it might be that you have to put the darkest color down first and then work into your lights or that you have to put more of the dark color. Whereas with the Nina, I can get away with less color or something quite possible. So I'm going to color two different colors for my tree trunk on both of them. And uh, a little bit on the stamping, I, I stamped my dinosaur first, masked him out, and then stamped the tree behind him. And the roar means I love you is what the stamp set comes with, but I replaced it with thanks so that these could be thank you cards because I am single and I am of an age that I don't have a sweetheart to send it to, so I thought I could get more use out of a thank you card. And you can adjust with that. I love that Lawn Fawn broke up the sentiments so that you can actually insert something else in the middle. You could even move them further apart and put a nice big thank you die cut in the middle. A lot of fun things. Now I wanted to try these dots in Colorless Blender. They, on either one of them, they didn't show up very much in the tummies, which is where I was planning on putting them. But on the back of it, where, where the dark color would be, it's showing up much more on the Nina. And it seems to be, the, the dots are softer, but they show up 
with more difference in them. On the blending card, I think you get sharper edges to the shapes of the, the blobs that you color, but there's less contrast, less difference. Now it's very possible that if I were to color a bunch of layers over it and make it really dark, I would get a little more of the Nina look. But again, we're keeping apples to apples here just to see what that comparison is. But if you look at just one card, the Nina is on the left again and the blending card is on the right. The one on the right looks like white paper. It looks fine. And I wouldn't say you can't use it at all. It's just a different look. And that is the difference between the two of them. Now I'll probably use the rest of that blending card to do some fine art with. Because I'm, I'm not sure that that's really what I want to do for my cards. But I might find some techniques when I'm doing my fine art that I can then teach you as I experiment with it. So we'll see where that goes and what kinds of things that I learned. So hope you enjoyed this. Click on the link to subscribe if you have not yet already because I'll put out lots of videos and I don't want you to miss any. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.